You can train for everything, combat drills, weapons, survival, but nothing teaches you what it's like to take a bullet. What really happens when you get shot? Does the pain hit first or do instincts take over? We're breaking down the hard truth today. No Hollywood glamour, no sugarcoating, just the raw reality of what it feels like when you're hit in the middle of a firefight. If you think you know, think again. The physical aspects of getting shot are only one element in a situation that also affects both the soldier and those around them mentally and emotionally. But what many don't realize is that these physical, emotional, and mental challenges don't begin when the soldier actually gets shot. Their impact is felt from the moment the soldier enters a firefight. United Task Force describes a firefight as simply a combat engagement between two opposing forces where fire is exchanged. While this is true on the purely technical level, that description does nothing to describe what it feels like to actually be in a firefight, especially if it's a soldier's first time attempting to use their training while coming under the assault of a barrage of bullets from an opposing force. Fear and adrenaline mix in the soldier's mind, which instantly shoots back to their training and the four Fs used to describe the goals soldiers are supposed to achieve during a firefight – find, fix, finish, and follow through. These foundations of a successful firefight are well drilled into a soldier's mind. However, executing this process becomes difficult as a quiet and deceptively peaceful scene suddenly erupts into a hectic mess of soldiers running for cover as instructions are screamed, with the number one priority quickly becoming firing back. The initial thrill of battle comes with both physical and emotional consequences. According to the AMEDD Center of History and Heritage, the combat stress experienced during a firefight can lead to muscular tension, with shaking and tremors also being reported. These responses are typically the result of a fast adrenaline spike in the body, as the soldier goes from being somewhat relaxed, to the extent this is possible in a potential combat scenario, to suddenly being rocketed into a situation where they urgently need their muscles and minds to act as one. The Modern War Institute at West Point backs this up via a survey in which it asks soldiers about the physical and emotional stress they felt when in active combat. Almost a third, 31.9%, mentioned muscle tension, while 24.4% said they entered a tunnel vision-like state, and a further 15% said that combat gave them the shakes. Sweat builds up, often excessively, as the soldier scrambles for position while attempting to line up an enemy in their sights. Abdominal distress is also common, though tachycardia or elevated heartbeat is perhaps the most worrying physical response to a firefight. The soldier often becomes acutely aware of the beating of their own heart, with that sound and feeling often moving to the forefront of their mind. In fact, the previously mentioned West Point study says that 87.9% of the soldiers surveyed experienced a heart rate increase, easily detectable as the beating of the heart becomes a main focus. Such a response is often accompanied by a sense of breathlessness. 42.3% of those surveyed by West Point noted rapid breathing in combat situations, with sensations of faintness and giddiness often occurring as the soldier undergoes extreme stress. Emotionally, the soldier is likely to go through a roller coaster ride in a matter of seconds. The Cambridge University Press says that a firefight, especially one taking place at close quarters, can lead to intense emotional responses, including fear, panic, anxiety, angst, and even horror at the events unfolding before their eyes. Some even feel a sense of elation, especially if they manage to hit a target, though this is rarely a feeling the soldier actively seeks. That elation is often the unexpected consequence of seeing training pay off and an opposing soldier go down. However, the elation is often replaced by feelings of shame and guilt later, even though the action the soldier took was part of their duty. The West Point survey again backs this up. It found that around 35% of soldiers experience a fear response during a firefight, with a little over 30% feeling anger. Sadness, joy, and disgust were less common, though it's notable that around 10% of soldiers feel a sense of elation. But perhaps the most surprising emotion that a soldier engaged in a firefight feels is trust in their comrades. 38% say they had this emotional response during firefights. The point of all this is to highlight that the soldier who gets shot is very rarely caught unawares. Both physically and emotionally, soldiers are already operating in a heightened state when they come under fire, with both states likely to play a role in how it feels when everything goes wrong and in a firefight, it can go wrong in an instant. The soldier may not find adequate cover. They may become so focused on a threat coming from one direction that they miss another emerging beyond their field of sight. Whatever the exact chain of events leading up to the fateful moment may be, the result is the same. A bullet pierces the skin. The soldier has been shot. Which brings us to the question we posed at the beginning of the video. What does getting shot feel like for a soldier in active combat? It's difficult to get a bead on how many US soldiers are shot every year, 
The Defense Casualty Analysis System maintains records, but they are somewhat vague. For instance, the site tells us that 844 American soldiers died in 2022, though none through hostile action. Hostile action isn't clearly defined, but it stands to reason that this category includes all instances of soldiers being shot dead by an enemy, along with all instances of soldiers being killed by explosive devices or any other military means. In 2021, there were 13 of these hostile action deaths, with 2013 providing a 10-year peak of 91. It's worth pointing out that these figures don't include the number of soldiers who were shot but survived their injuries. They only record the deaths. Still, they give us a sense of the number of US soldiers who have experienced what it feels like to get shot during combat, and that feeling starts with the physical aspect. With bullets flying all around and loud popping noises echoing, perhaps the craziest thing about actually being shot is that the soldier may not even feel it, at least not at first. The initial feeling of a bullet penetrating the skin is situational dependent, meaning it will differ depending on where the soldier has been shot. It can often feel as innocuous as a small pebble being thrown at the soldier, or be a glancing pain almost akin to a paper cut. That may come as a surprise given that a bullet typically travels at around 2,700 feet per second, meaning it can easily reach Mach 2 before it makes contact. The type of bullet used can also impact this initial feeling. If the bullet stays intact upon entering the body, it's more likely that the soldier will feel a dull thud and little pain during those initial seconds. Should the bullet be the type that splits apart upon impact, however, flesh-searing pain is soon to follow. But for those initial moments, it might almost feel to the soldier as though they've just experienced a close call. They may even be able to continue fighting for a few seconds before the physical effects start to take hold. Writing for Thrillist in 2017, Deborah Cotton explains what it felt like to get shot as she stood in a crowd on Mother's Day in 2013. She talks about a surprise initial painlessness, giving way to the realization that she'd been shot. As soon as she realized she'd been shot, Deborah fainted. Lying on the street, she began fading in and out of consciousness, describing the experience as almost spiritual. Instead of pain, she says, there was a burning, aggravating sensation in my stomach area, growing outward from where the bullet traveled. Yet there was still no sharp or shooting pain. She even remained cogent enough to test her own body, wiggling her toes and fingers to see if the bullet had paralyzed her. She spent most of the first two minutes after being shot taking stock of her life. Beyond that, she offers little recollection of what it feels like to be shot, as medical personnel arrived and she was carted away from the scene via ambulance. The soldier in combat doesn't have that luxury. Their experience is likely to be very different from Deborah Cotton's. Deborah was fortunate, in a sense, that the bullet that struck her was fired from a 9mm pistol. She didn't feel the searing pain that she expected because the bullet didn't break apart and the shot came from a gun that is relatively low in firing power when compared to the rifles and much higher caliber guns that a soldier is likely to face. US Marine Lance Corporal Matt McKelleny provides a much more harrowing account of how it can feel for a soldier to get shot. First you feel the round hit, he says. It feels like a sledgehammer hitting you in the back. My stomach felt like the worst incontinence imaginable. As you may have guessed, McKelleny was shot by a far more powerful gun than the 9mm pistol used against Deborah Cotton, although he also, oddly enough, had a somewhat similar delayed reaction. Though he felt like he'd just been struck with a sledgehammer, McKelleny tried to immediately resume fighting. It was then that he started feeling the true effects the bullet had had on his body. I started flailing and screaming as horribly as you could possibly imagine, he says, when discussing the loss of bodily control combined with the psychological impact that comes with taking a bullet. Still, McKelleny's experience shared one thing in common with Cotton's. He ended up blacking out, as he felt a strange warmth pouring over him, a feeling that sounds similar to the burning sensation Cotton describes. He attempted to move himself into position to inspect the damage before he passed out. So our hypothetical soldier may in fact experience far more pain than Cotton described, though not the slicing or searing pain that you might imagine. A bullet hitting like a sledgehammer is still a blunt force sensation, though obviously more impactful than a small pebble. In both cases, what comes after being hit seems to be much the same, warmth followed by blacking out as the body fights to keep everything running. Of course, the sensations differ when a soldier is shot multiple times. One anonymous US veteran describes what it felt like to be shot three times in Afghanistan, with two bullets going into his back and another into his arm. He describes the pain he felt, describing it as feeling like, my guts had been ripped apart and pulled out of my body as he lay frozen on the ground. But interestingly, that pain started to fade as the minutes passed, with the soldier passing in and out of consciousness. This is likely both because that kind of physical reaction is involuntary, and because he felt an urge to keep closing my eyes because it felt so good. Again, we see the common thread of blacking out, where letting yourself go to sleep brings a sense of peace, along with some pain relief, to the physical experience. 
It's also clear from these three accounts that there's no singular way that a soldier will feel physically after getting shot. So much depends on where the person is shot and which type of bullet is used. For some, especially those hit only once with small arms fire, pain may not be as much of a factor as you may expect. A burning sensation follows the shot, but the pain isn't searing. But a larger round, or one that strikes center mass, can be excruciating, with a dull force flow being followed by an intense pain that may give way to a burning sensation and the intense desire to simply pass out. But whatever flavor the physical pain may take, it's only one part of the bigger picture. While the soldier is enduring all of that physically, they're also going through the emotional and mental ringer. For some, an odd feeling of calm takes over. That's what happened to Deborah Cotton, albeit not in a direct combat situation. In the moments after she'd been shot, her mind went into an analytical state as it attempted to assess the damage caused by the bullet while ensuring that her life was in order. A soldier in a combat situation may react differently to that. The screaming as horribly as you could possibly imagine, described by Matt McKelleny, is clearly as much a fear response as it is a reaction to the pain from being shot. But there is one thought or feeling that seems to take precedence above all others. I'm going to die. The anonymous soldier who was shot three times in Afghanistan felt it, as did Deborah Cotton. She describes laying there in the street after being shot thinking, this is it, I'm about to die. It's a feeling that appears common to all who have been shot. In a Reddit post asking the question of what went through soldiers' minds after being shot, several said exactly that. One respondent, whose account has since been deleted, said that the thought was soon followed by, this is how I'm gonna go, in a field in the middle of a shithole country that no one on earth cares about. What the fuck was the point? It's a response that seems born out of anger, perhaps echoing the anger that 30% of soldiers feel when actively engaged in a firefight. However, the Reddit poster says that this wasn't the case. There was no desperation or anger in the thought, they claim, only a calmness mixed with melancholy, almost as if the soldier's own mind was trying to help them assess the dire situation in which they found themselves. This calmness echoes that experienced by Deborah Cotton, who started conducting an inventory of her life as she lay bleeding. This strange emotional response can sometimes even lead to an odd euphoria, a phenomenon felt by many close to death, which remains difficult to explain. The BBC highlights research, pointing out that when a person is about to die, the brain orders the body to release several stress chemicals. Interestingly, it also notes a 2011 study in which researchers found that the serotonin levels released in the bodies of rats who were on the verge of death tripled, perhaps leading to a strange euphoria or calmness in their last moments. Could the same thing happen to a soldier who is shot in combat? The brain, believing that death is imminent, could be releasing a host of chemicals that allow the fear and shock of having been shot to give way to a strange, calm clarity. This may also explain the urge to pass out, as if the body is telling the soldier to simply let go. It's an open question and research is ongoing. However, as we mentioned earlier, it's not only the shot soldier who experiences strong feelings and has physical reactions in a combat situation. Those around the shot soldier go through those feelings alongside them, and in most cases, they'll be far less calm, though there are elements of training that might kick in. For instance, in basic training, recruits go through a range of exercises designed to simulate what it feels like to carry or drag a comrade who's been injured. This training may kick in for some of the shot soldier's comrades who, assuming the situation in the firefight permits it, may attempt to reach the soldier's position and attempt to drag them to cover so that a medic can work on them. Roland Bartetsko, a former German army paratrooper who fought with the Croatian Defense Council during the Bosnian War, recalls how he felt during a similar situation. In his case, a comrade was struck with a mortar round, though his reaction would have been the same if the soldier had been shot. I was running my lungs out, he says after he'd carried his comrade to safety and asked another soldier to keep watch over him. Having no idea where the rest of his troops were, he resorted to running through every building and trench he could find, screaming, wounded, we have wounded, sheer panic combined with the need to find others to help. Bartetsko's story also reveals a sad fact about something else that happens when a soldier gets shot or hurt. The rest must continue fighting. After securing his friend in his brigade commander's jeep, Bartetsko told him to hang tight before returning to the fighting. As he puts it, we couldn't leave our positions because one of our soldiers got wounded. So training kicks in for the other soldiers. They try to pull the shot soldier to safety, but can't neglect their duties in the field. The fighting doesn't stop because a single soldier was injured. And as was the case with Bartetsko's comrade, the shot soldier may have even been forced to wait alone until the fighting stops before he can receive any sort of medical care. Of course, this is again situational. Ideally, somebody will be providing first aid to the shot soldier promptly, which brings us to another person who will be affected by the incident, the medic. For an army medic, there is no room for panic, feelings of regret or sadness for his wounded comrade in the heat of the moment, though it wouldn't be surprising to find those feelings bubbling away behind the mask. 
The medic is there to do a job, to provide treatment as effectively as possible in the field. Vitaly, a 45-year-old medic serving with the Ukrainian army, recounts his experiences working with a soldier who had lost his foot to an anti-personnel mine. He says that the soldier asked him how many more minutes for evacuation, with Vitaly replying, 10 minutes maximum. His job at that moment, after having tended to the wound as best he could, was to provide comfort to his comrade. You are strong, brother. Just hold on. Everything will be okay. Vitaly, like most army medics, knows that blood loss is the leading cause of death on the battlefield. It accounts for up to 90% of pre-hospital survivable deaths, which means his job, along with every other medic's, boils down to stemming the shot soldier's loss of blood for long enough that the soldier can be evacuated to where they can receive proper medical care. Beyond that physical aspect, the army medic also has to focus on making the entire evacuation experience as trauma-free as possible for the shot soldier. Another Ukrainian army medic named Mikita points this out in an interview with the Kyiv Independent. He says that the time a wounded soldier spends alone on an ambulance stretcher can be among the most traumatic he will ever experience if he's forced to spend that time alone, because he'll start to process what happened. So medics will often engage the shot soldier in conversation, searching for topics that match the soldier's interests. This is to try and distract them from thinking about his injuries or the pain he feels. Small touches like trying to use their body to block the shot soldier's view of his injury are also common parts of the combat medic's playbook. So too, sadly, is lying. You look at the person and you understand whether they will be able to take the truth, says Makita. Everyone reacts differently to stress. As all of this is going on, the medic is also doing their job, demonstrating that combat medics need to be capable of holding their own emotions in check while showing great empathy to the shot soldier. The medic needs to gauge the shot soldier's physical and psychological condition and react to the injuries for which care is required. As Vitaly points out, the medic needs to remain cold-hearted when providing care, not allowing any visible emotions to creep onto their face. The shot soldier is the priority. Writing for Wired, former combat medic Conor Narciso recounts working with the Green Berets when a staff sergeant named Nick Lavery was shot. Lavery, who Narciso says was the most physically imposing soldier he'd ever seen, bravely positioned himself between an enemy shooter and a young infantryman during combat, resulting in him getting shot at close range with a PKM 7.62mm machine gun. The bullet entered his leg. Narciso says the round shattered Lavery's femur before severing the femoral artery. This artery runs down the thigh to supply blood to the leg, making stemming the flow of blood out of that artery Narciso's chief priority. The combat medic succeeded, at least in the sense that he stopped the flow of blood long enough to save Lavery's life. Sadly, the most imposing Green Beret Narciso had ever met was forced to have his leg amputated after he was shot. Narciso's story is common to most combat medics. The medic's job is to stem the bleeding while calling for evacuation as he tends and talks to the wounded soldier. As pointed out by the Ukrainian medics discussed earlier, the job requires Narciso to remain calm, even as bullets are flying all around him, as well as to keep his emotions in check so that he can treat the wounded. Time is always critical, says Narciso. Survival may depend on the quick instincts of a first responder. What's clear from all of this is that the soldier who has been shot is not the only one affected by the incident. Their fellow soldiers often start to run on their finely tuned combat instincts, attempting to get the wounded soldier to safety while maintaining their own position. As for combat medics, they need to stay ice cold when providing care, focusing on treating the wound and stemming the bleeding while reassuring the shot soldier that everything is going to be okay, even if that reassurance is a lie. Over and above the effects on individuals who are directly affected, a soldier being shot also impacts the broader environment in a combat situation. On the obvious level, a shot soldier is one fighter less in the group, meaning the rest of the soldiers involved in the firefight may have to compensate for the loss. This might mean repositioning as best they can to confront the threat the shot soldier faced. Split-second decisions based on the soldier's collective training are made in an effort to survive. And perhaps that's the best word to use for this situation, survive. When a soldier goes down, the group's focus will likely remain the same, namely to ensure that the enemy isn't able to suppress the rest of the soldiers with fire. Allowing them to do that could be a death sentence, as the enemy could use the fire to close the distance and surround the rest of the soldiers. But the group's ability to lay down suppressing fire of its own in response is diminished because there is one less gun firing at the enemy. It's almost like a ripple effect. One shot soldier weakens the entire platoon, as well as forcing a switch in focus as the platoon tries to protect the wounded soldier while continuing the job at hand. When all is said and done, the prevailing emotion that many of those involved in this kind of incident feel is often guilt. When the shot soldier is successfully evacuated, but that evacuation comes at the cost of the lives of other soldiers, feelings of guilt are common for the surviving soldier. Fellow soldiers may also feel guilt, especially those in command who have made the decisions that ultimately led to the soldier being shot. 
This is a stark reminder that the effects of a soldier being shot in combat continue taking their toll long after the incident itself. The shot soldier may have to deal with the physical ramifications of a single bullet for the rest of their life, with an added helping of guilt stemming from the extra stress placed on their unit in battle. With that, you now have a better idea of what it feels like to get shot in combat, not only for the unfortunate soldier taking the bullet, but for those around who provide care and cover in the aftermath. Do you have first-hand experience of this type of situation yourself? Please share your experiences in the comments, and thank you for watching the video. Now go and check out Shoot to Kill How Many Soldiers Can Do This, or click this other video instead.